Well, when it comes to community, a new state law allows places of worship to host people in tiny homes. It's part of an effort to fight homelessness. John Croman joins us with more on how it's working here in the Twin Cities. John? Julie, these are being called sacred settlements, an extension of the missions of the churches that are involved. It's not just about a safe place to live, but creating a community around the person who's been unhoused and isolated from society. I live in a fabulous tiny house. Valerie Roy's house may be tiny, but it's a godsend to her. Much better than living in a car or in a shelter. Valerie's place sits across the parking lot from Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Roseville, one of a handful of pilots for the sacred settlement movement. I feel extremely safe. Yeah, everything's built to code or better. Very efficient, very, very well kept. I'm a very well-kept woman these days. I'm Valerie Roy, age 53, and I've lived half my life in vans, cars, and school buses. Valerie testified at the Capitol in March in support of a bipartisan bill that made it clear such settlements, tiny houses hosted by faith communities, are legal in Minnesota under the right conditions. Loving your neighbor, that's what this model allows the church to do. Fred Ogamachi is with Settle, the nonprofit that is running the pilot. The organization's larger settlement is at Mosaic Christian Community on St. Paul's East Side. It's generated some conversation about this, about the chronically homeless that actually wasn't occurring. Most tiny houses don't come with modern plumbing, but the church's facilities are open to Valerie, as is the common area that includes a full kitchen. And the tiny house next door to hers is occupied by what are known as intentional neighbors, a family that volunteered to move into the settlement. So you're creating a community where you have resourced people, okay, around people who, who can all of a sudden feel like there are other people who care. There's no dignity in shelters. We need a different model and maybe this is it. Well, some of the faith communities that can't host tiny homes yet are still involved by building tiny homes or helping with a workshop that's operated by the same settled nonprofit. Randy Julie. All right, thank you, John.